Hey everybody, welcome to The Warp, I'm Jack Rita. And in this video, I wanna talk about my five favorite eight player combo cards. Now these combo cards are uh, promos, they're giveaways that were uh, originally made for Escape Velocity, which was a science fiction themed convention here in the Washington DC area. Uh, it hasn't happened live physically uh, for a few years, uh, but it may happen again. The last one was in 2019. Um, so we had these as uh, giveaways. There are 42 of them. And um, they, they're like the combo cards that you can get in the 42nd anniversary edition, but those only go up to 5P. These go up to 8P. Uh, and they include aliens from all expansions leading up to, but not including uh, Odyssey. So it was the first six expansions uh, with the base game. So um, these are going to be given away at future conventions that I happen to attend. Um, I've been bringing them to Gen Con and I give them to Cosmic Encounter fans that ask for them. Um, I, I suspect there will be some kind of an escape velocity event in the coming years, once again, here in the Washington, D.C. area. So if that happens, we'll let you know, and I will attend, and I will have them for anybody who wants to get them. We don't uh, ship them out. We're not a store, so you're just going to have to be patient and wait. Um, so let's take a look at that. These are uh, five of my favorite uh, and it's because um, I think the mix of aliens are a really good mix to have, especially if you're going all the way up to eight players to play that game. Um, there's a lot of others that almost made the list, and in some circumstances, uh, others would maybe bump out these, but these I respond to. I've played with them a few times, um, so I really enjoy them. So in no particular order, uh, we're going to jump in. The first one is called Just Rewards. So uh, the aliens that we have in it, um, the first three um, in our first bar, which is a uh, three player. Um, and the, this will work if you're, if you're doing a three player or up to four, up to five. But I picked these five especially because of their, just the sheer fun and madness when you get all the way up to AP. So again, the first three, we've got Quartermaster. That is the alien that delivers rewards. We have Ghoul, uh, that is an alien that is rewarded for uh, defeating ships. And then we have Mercenary, who is always rewarded for winning. Um, so you can see right away the theme here with just rewards is this is a rewards-centric. So I'm always using the reward deck in my games. It is a default element. Uh, don't even consider it a variant. It is part of the game got all three reward decks in there and I also have custom reward cards. I've got my custom defender rewards and of course the ultra rewards from Odyssey. So it's a big fat reward deck so I want to do games occasionally where I have a lot of aliens that interact with that deck or have the ability to get more rewards because it's just a much more explosive game. So even with just those three right there Quartermaster, Ghoul, and Mercenary. Ghoul and Mercenary are going to be getting rewards more often than you typically would, which is when you are getting um, on the side of the defense as an ally. That's usually the way that you get rewards, so winning defensive allies. But uh, here you're going to have two aliens that are triggering rewards more often, which means that Quartermaster will trigger more often. So Quartermaster is the first alien for a reason. It's going to be in any game, no matter what your uh, player count is. And uh, and that means you've got that player who is constantly firing uh, their alien power and being able to see the rewards. And then if more than one player is getting rewards, deciding who's going to get what, very powerful effect. The next one we have is Coward. And Coward is an alien that can withdraw from the encounter and get rewards. Uh, followed by Yin Yang, uh, that is an alien that can ally with both sides, so they're more likely to end up getting rewards by being a defensive ally. Uh, then you have Daredevil, who can gain rewards for themselves and their allies if the if the um, encounter totals are close close to each other. Uh, and this is one where you could use the alternate timeline Daredevil from Odyssey. It's a better version of Daredevil, so I highly recommend that you do that. Um, then you have Assistant, and uh, Assistant uh, is an essence alien that um, is 
giving, helping people out, helping people in other ways. Rewards is one of the ways that you do it, and they can get rewards by doing it. And then we have Cloak, which is one of my favorite aliens, very controversial. And this is the alien that can make secret changes. When your encounter totals are very high, Cloak has everyone close their eyes, and then they can move uh, a ship or move a card or do both or neither, and uh, they can get a reward. And if somebody can correctly guess what Cloak has done in the short amount of time that everyone's eyes were closed, they can get a reward. Um, and so, yeah, just rewards. It's a really, as I said, it's explosive. It's any game with the reward deck can potentially be very explosive. And when you have more and more players getting into that deck, and of course, there's rewards. You can get cards from the cosmic deck. You can get ships out. But by and large, people go to that reward deck because they want the kickers. They want the rifts. They want the special artifacts. Um, they want the other effects. And so that's what makes those games explosive. All right. In a slightly different direction, we have this one that is called Peaceniks. And I like this one because it is going to be switching up the dynamic of the game a little bit. So we're starting off with Pacifist that wins encounters with a negotiate card. Then we have Empath, which is sort of Pacifist cousin a little bit. It can change an attack to negotiate uh, in order to get into a deal situation. So the the changing of the uh, of the cards. Uh, and then we have Bleeding Heart, which can turn low attacks into negotiate. So uh, Bleeding Heart is going to trigger Empath a little more uh, frequently. Um, but it can also, it Pacifist changes that up a little bit. So that's kind of a, a weird dynamic. Uh, then we have Assistant again. So this is another Essence Alien um, that can that can help people out. Um, and it's it's more fitting into that Peacenik theme. Um, we've got Neighbor um, that is going to add uh, ships in the system to an attack. So um, this is not as congruent with the first three aliens, but... I like the idea of having these variants. And when you've got um, more deals happening, potentially with Empath and Bleeding Heart, you're more likely to have ships showing up uh, in these other systems. Uh, systems. Uh, then we get Xenophile, which is an interesting spin on Neighbor here because it gets strength from having other people in their system. Uh, then we have Squee. Squee is an alien from Storm that can... Uh, uh, it says, you know, its short description is, is dangerously adorable. That doesn't really tell you anything about what the alien does, but it's, it encourages you to let uh, Squee get away with the, uh, the, the uh, encounter um, and to not really attack them. Uh, and then we have Love, and Love is, is a, an alien that is going to be uh, throwing a card away at the start of their turn, and everyone else can throw away a similar card in order to get their ships out of the warp. Um, but uh, it gives love a chance to either get all of those cards or to get a free colony. Um, and so it's just uh, that one, again, is, is fitting into the theme. But uh, I like some of the stuff. You know, the, these first three aliens are really what's going to shake up this game. And then the other aliens are creating uh, alternate elements that will happen in that dynamic game. So it's not as heavy, heavy handed with uh, all of the effects as just rewards is, um, but I like some of those that dynamics, especially because those first three aliens are again they're going to be in every game where you're using this card. So it um, I just enjoy that effect. I might have a there there is another one that has more about making deals, and I almost included it, um, but I feel like you're getting enough of that here already with that. So um, if you really want to go overboard, there's another one that's all about making deals. Um, this one is kind of uh, crazy because it um, the aliens in it are are all about the theme of the of the card, but it does for create for some interesting games. So it's called Contest of Champions. Um, so we're going to start off with in our first three we have Bride, Bride's the alien that can marry another player, which means that they're automatically allied. They can show each other cards and they can do an exchange. Uh, of course, Bride can divorce that player and take half of their cards as alimony. Uh, then we've got Crystal, and Crystal is an alien that can uh, multiply attack cards when um, they have a card that is the same as the one that the main player on their side reveals. So if they reveal a six and you have a six as Crystal, you're going to multiply those sixes and add that. You know, that is 
part of what's your encounter total. So big uh, explosive. Um, and then the third one is aristocrat. Aristocrat is an alien that, that picks their starting hand and they're going to be getting flares throughout the game from the flare deck. Um, and what's interesting there is you've got Bride, which is going to probably marry Aristocrat very early on and then take half their hand or want to. Um, and, and you've got Crystal, which can take advantage of these cards. So does Aristocrat, when they're choosing their starting hand, are they choosing a hand that keeps Bride in mind? and say, you know what, I'm going for maybe something that's very unconventional for Aristocrat. I'm not taking all the great cards. Maybe you're taking all those cosmic zaps so you can zap Bride um, over and over again. Uh, maybe you're taking um, a lot of attack eights. It's the most common attack card. Um, not, not a lot of them, but a couple of those so that you can trigger Crystal uh, because eight is the one, well, now, I mean, eight, eight, eight is one that they're most likely to have at any given time. Um, then we have loser, and loser's the one that can win um, when they lose, and, and they'll lose when they win once they've declared an upset. And again, if it's a four-player game, Aristocrat has to keep that in mind as well. So maybe they don't want the 40 and the 30. Um, maybe they want some low cards. Um, and again, maybe just because of Bride's um, presence in the game, maybe they go with something, just, com just an utter garbage hand. Uh, and then they say, yeah, we'll get married right away. Um You've got Ghoul making a, another appearance here. This is the one that gets rewarded for defeating ships. So I like that in there because now we've got reward cards that are a part of the game uh, that makes Bride maybe want to marry somebody later on once they've got some rewards. Um, you potentially have some of those negative um, attack cards for dealing with Loser. And we've got Fodder. Fodder is the one that can discard cards in their hand that are between the card that they played and the one that their opponent played um, to add those in there. And uh, that's just, I, I like having that in there. We've got Sorcerer who can switch the encounter cards. And then we have Mesmer who can change their artifacts. So um, I like having Mesmer and Aristocrat in the same game um, as I did in the championship at Cosmic Con. Um, and it was Mesmer's presence more than anything else that informed my starting hand. But I threw that in there just to be like, all right, what are you going to do now? Because there are other aliens that are even more, potentially more dangerous to have in that mix. So Contest of Champions is uh, bananas. It's utterly bananas. Um, all right, now I included this one here because I love the silly um, opposites uh theme that's going on here with this one which is called square dance so these are it's all partners um bow to your partner and uh so we start off with love and hate our, our first two aliens uh and then we have winner um so i'm gonna start with those three love and hate love you're discarding a card to uh at the start of your turn everyone else can do the same they can get their ships out you can get your ships out uh, and get a colony or you can get those cards um, depending on what everyone's discarding. And then you have hate, which does the same sort of thing. They're discarding a card, but everyone has to discard the same type of card. And if it's an attack, it has to be a higher attack. Otherwise, hate is going to big, big, big pick off three of their ships, probably trying to take out at least one foreign colony. Um, so having both of them in the same game is, is just insane in the best possible way. Now we have winner. Winner can get an extra colony uh, when it's their turn, if they win by more than 10, if they win by a lot, they're going to get a colony. And of course, we have winner's partner, loser. And this was, winner was the first alien that really did that uh, in uh, in an obvious way. Uh, and I remember Kevin Wilson telling me, um, I want to have a a partner for loser. I want to have a winner. Uh, I like the, that idea, which is what inspired me to create love after playing with hate. Um, so winner and loser, their their effects are have nothing to do with one another. Um, but the dynamic of having loser in the game is always, I think, fun because you've got that race to the bottom potential. Now, you know it's going to happen because loser has to declare an upset before you choose your cards. Uh, which means that you may have been wanting to play and negotiate, but if loser declares an upset, now you have to play an attack and you're trying to lose. Um, and so 
just having loser in the same game with winner, where winner is trying to win by 10 or more, um, is just a, it's a nice headache. Um, our next pair is masochist and sadist. And here I would recommend using the alternate timeline version of both of these aliens from Cosmic Odyssey. They're just both better versions of those aliens and are a lot of fun to have in the game. Masochist can win the game by losing all of their ships. And at some point, the masochist, masochist player has to decide if they're going all in on the strategy of just losing uh, because they can win the normal way. But at a certain point, you, you got to choose which one you're really going to do. And Sadist is uh, is trying to see a lot of people lose their ships. And so we've got hate zapping ships, but you have love potentially getting ships out of the warp. Um, it makes for some inter interesting uh, dynamics. And then we have human and alien. So human is an alien uh, from the base game. It gives you plus four all the time. Uh, it can zap itself to win. Um, so having human and loser in the same game is pretty crazy. Um, and then Alien is an Essence Alien that uh, is giving people traumas, is placing these Essence cards down next to them, and then potentially re revealing them and changing up what happens in the encounter. And so the presence of Alien can really shake up a lot of what these other aliens are trying to accomplish. Um, and then the last one that we've got here, uh, which is... It's going gonna, it's gonna to be an interesting evening around the table if you're using this combo card, and it is called Role Playing Gone Wrong, and it's because all the aliens on here lend themselves to being role-played, starting with the king of that, uh, Sniveller. Sniveller is an alien that when people play it, they almost can't help themselves. They start to snivel in a very whiny voice. Guys, I've got the most ships in the warp. I've got the lowest attack card. Uh, or whatever the case may be. And so I know people who love to do this and they love to do this with some of the other aliens. And so I have uh, taken into account a lot of aliens that I think lend themselves to this. So our next one is Coward. Coward we saw before. It can withdraw from an encounter uh, and it can get rewards for doing it. Uh, then we have General. General draws cards for uh, each of the allies that they have in the game. And so in an 8P game, General is going to command a lot of uh, cards. We have Alien, which we just talked about. It's abducting other aliens. Um, it's really, it's abducting ships uh, and giving them traumas. We have Bride, which we've seen before. That's marrying a player. When we were playtesting Bride, my, my friends and I did a lot of role-playing, uh, much to the annoyance of our actual spouses. Uh, we have Anarchist. Anarchist is another essence alien that can change up the rules of the game and in, in just a really wild way. Uh, we have Butler, who uh, is trying to take over the menial tasks of an encounter and gets a reward for it. And then we have Greenhorn, who makes convenient mistakes. Um, and so these are all interesting characters to play. What they're going to do to the game, I think, is um, there's not a lot of huge impact like we've seen on some of these other uh, combo cards, but uh, there's just some real opportunities for uh, some silliness around the table if the players are up for that as uh, almost the goal of the game is to really see who can play their character the best uh, and then see who wins. So if you do try out the role-playing gone wrong combo, uh, let me know how that was, how was the role-playing, who won, uh, and any other anecdotes from that. Those are my five favorite, five of my favorite, because there's others that are favorites as well, and it depends on the mood I'm in. Um, but these, uh, I, I know that I've played and I've enjoyed, and um, I think they make for an interesting evening of Cosmic Encounter, especially when you get all the way up to 8P. That's it for this one, everyone. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon.